It turns out that while pen testing and vulnerability assessments seem very similar, they're actually quite different. Let's talk about those differences. Hey guys, Alex Riles here from MicroAge. Today, I thought it would be fun to talk about one of the most requested cybersecurity services that MicroAge gets on a weekly basis, and that is pen testing and vulnerability assessments. Now, it turns out as I talk to our clients, many of them are a little bit confused about the difference between pen testing and vulnerability assessments, and most people think that they're almost the same thing. So I'd like to chat about that a little bit today, but we're gonna go ahead and skip all the way to the end, and the punchline is you always wanna do a vulnerability assessment before you do a pen test. Now you may be saying, but Alex, most pen tests I've paid for include a vulnerability assessment. And that's true, but probably not for the reasons you're thinking and not to your maximum benefit. So let's talk about the difference. But before we do, I want to dive a little bit into what is a vulnerability assessment and what is a pen test. So I'd like to start with an analogy that may be helpful. So I'm a mountain person, much more than a beach person like my wife. I would love to have a log cabin in the mountains, somewhere where it gets cold in the winter. But if we think about that log cabin, what am I likely gonna do in the summer and in the fall? Well, I'm gonna prepare the cabin for winter, right? So that's gonna mean I'm gonna go around the outside of the cabin and I'm gonna look for any holes I can find and I'm gonna patch those holes. I'm probably gonna get on the roof and look for any issues on the roof and fix that too. I might even look at the floorboards and make sure they're nice and tight and snug. I don't want any cold air getting in when winter comes. In this analogy, a vulnerability assessment is what you do to prepare for winter. This is when we're scanning our environment, all aspects of the environment. We're looking at your network, your firewalls, your mobile phones, your tablets, your laptops. We're looking at your cloud environment, your IoT devices, your entire attack surface area. We're evaluating to, to see if we can find any vulnerabilities that we can fix. And if we find them, we're gonna fix them. Fixing usually looks like applying a patch, or maybe it looks like a changing a configuration, like an old web server that still uses an old antiquated encryption protocol in the config file. You need to remove or comment out that line and reboot your web server. So if we're preparing for winter by doing a vulnerability scan to get ready for a pen test, the next step you would then do is call up an ethical hacker and say, hey, will you come test out my environment? I've already secured it. I'm ready for winter. The pen test is winter coming. The ethical hacker is going to come and yes, the first thing they're going to do is a vulnerability scan of your environment. But they're not doing it so they can tell you right away the vulnerabilities they found. They'll tell you later, but they're doing it to give them intelligence to know how to then penetrate or compromise your environment. They're gonna use the information from their vulnerability scan to build an exploit or use a known exploit that's already been created for a certain vulnerability and they're gonna compromise your environment and then they're gonna write a report at the end and they're gonna share with you all the ways that they were able to get into your environment. So yes, a pen test includes a vulnerability scan, uh, scan and a vulnerability assessment, but only for the purpose of initially helping the pen tester later to help you. Wouldn't it be better as administrators if we fixed all the vulnerabilities first and then called the pen tester so that the report that they generate says we couldn't find a whole lot. I'd certainly know that that's how I'd like to do it. So let's take a step back even further and talk about what is a vulnerability and how exactly do you track and measure that with software like Qualys or Rapid7 or Tenable? And the answer is what's called a CVE database, Common Vulnerabilities and Exposure. A CVE database is a public database that stores all known vulnerabilities in software applications. So each vulnerability gets its own unique number called a CVS, uh, CVS number, CVE number. So the way this works is if I'm a security researcher and I am testing Microsoft Windows, and this is gonna shock you, but Windows does have a couple of vulnerabilities found occasionally. So as a researcher, I find an issue with Windows, I'm gonna notify Microsoft and give them a chance to create a patch first 
so that they have provided a solution for end users to be able to fix the issue. Then I report the CVE to the CVE database. I get a number, it goes in the database. Now everyone can see that vulnerability and they can then know to go patch this specific issue to fix it or maybe change a config file. The downside to the CVE database is that the hackers have the same information. Now the hackers have one place to go to look at all the known vulnerabilities in all of our software. And they're gonna write exploits to exploit that vulnerability and compromise and likely get into your network or your software. So the important point here is make sure you're patching regularly. This is why Microsoft has Patch Tuesday and every week there's a lot of new patches for all the vulnerabilities found from that week. So there's really two types of vulnerability assessments that people typically do, internal and external. External pen testing is when we start from the outside of your network and see if there's any ways to get in with a vulnerability scan. We might look for vulnerabilities in your public facing web server or your DNS server, any service that's publicly addressable, any IP address that's publicly available. So once we do that, we can then maybe penetrate inside and do, then do an internal scan of the network. Sometimes when you hire a vulnerability scanner to come in, you're gonna start and set that up internally from the beginning, pretending that a hacker's already got inside and you wanna scan the internal network, all of your servers, all of your systems, all your internal network devices, and see if there's any vulnerabilities that are found. So internal and external are the two ways that we can do pen testing and vulnerability scanning. So these vulnerability scans also don't have to be a one-time thing. You can have continuous vulnerability scanning. A lot of the software products on the market today will scan not constantly 24 by seven, but they'll scan on a regular interval throughout the year so that you're constantly looking for new vulnerabilities that might emerge as you deploy patches and new software applications in your environment. So the last topic is why do we do vulnerability scanning and why do we do pen testing? And the answer is two reasons probably more, but the two that come to mind for me are governance, risk, and compliance. Let's say that you're trying to align to a cybersecurity framework like NIST cybersecurity framework, or maybe ISO 27001, or if you work with the DOD, CMMC. As you comply with these frameworks, they're gonna all require that you do a pen test at least once a year. And those pen tests imply that there's a vulnerability assessment done. The second reason is cybersecurity insurance. Most every cyber insurance policy I've ever seen does require that you do a pen test, knowing that a vulnerability assessment comes along with it. That doesn't prevent you from doing your own vulnerability assessments first to prepare for your pen test, which is certainly a best practice and what I would recommend. I would always recommend also that you don't just do one pen test a year. Best practice would say two to three if you're a large environment. And you should probably use different providers each time because everybody does pen testing just a little bit different. In fact, if you have a company that comes to you and says their pen tests are completely automated, run for the hills. A good pen test is always a good combination of automation and human resources to develop a good answer. So I hope this has been helpful to understand the difference between a pen test and a vulnerability assessment. They're both incredibly important, but I would certainly typically do one vulnerability assessment before the other uh, as a pen test. Make sure that you are preparing effectively for winter because the cold is certainly coming. I hope this has been helpful. I'll see you next time. Thanks.